Unit 5, Blood, Section 5, Types of Blood Spatters. Uh, it should be noted that this uh, section has a lot of images of actual blood spatters. Um, if you don't like seeing blood, um, I'm, I'm not sure why you're in forensics, but um, if you don't, that's okay. Uh, you can always view this in a black and white version. Um, just ask me about it. Blood stain pattern analysis. Um, so some of the things that we learn from uh, blood stains or blood spatters is uh, the location and description, obviously, of the pattern. Uh, you're going to learn how to do that. Understanding the direction um, and the angles of impact. Uh, you'll be able to calculate that. You're going to learn how to understand area of origin. You'll get some basic understanding of how to look at a blood spatter and determine the um, type of weapon used. Uh, minimum number of blows. Uh, this is going to depend upon the type of weapon uh, that we're talking about, um, the minimum uh, number of impacts. Um, uh, if it's a gun, you're going to get uh, generally a one spatter per shot. Um, but then if you have something like, say, a baseball bat, taking a baseball bat to somebody, the first hit is not going to result in, uh, in a spatter. Um, the second one will. The first shot, usually you'll get blood on the bat and maybe a little bit of blood spatter around the uh, initial impact. Um, the larger blood spatters, they're going to be all the following hits. So as you pull the bat backwards over your shoulder to strike again, blood that was uh, transferred from the, um, the victim to the bat is not going to get cast off behind you. It's going to spray off of the bat. You'll hit it again, hit the sub, uh, individual again, and then that's going to cause an additional spatter now um, from the individual. Uh, we can also determine positions, and this is going to be shown in, uh, in a couple of the uh, videos that we uh, have watched or will watch. And then the sequence of events um, can be determined by uh, understanding how the blood spatters are. Alright, some vocab. Um, spatter, origin source, angle of impact, uh, apparent droplet, um, which is the initial one, then a satellite spatter are going to be when a drop hits a drop and causes a splash. Um, those are going to be satellite spatters, and then spines are the pointed edges that radiate, out from the, radiate outward from that spatter. Um, and I'll show you that in the next couple pictures. Um, recommend pausing here and making sure you have all these uh, words written down. All right, so we're going to talk about two types of blood stains, passive and projected. Passive are the result of just the force of gravity, uh, nothing else. Drops, um, flowing blood, pools of blood, okay, all going to be examples of something passive. There's no extra force behind it besides gravity. So you have a single versus a multiple trail. Um, so a single trail is going to be, I mean, kind of... Think of the times when you've had, for example, a bloody nose. Uh, a single trail is just going to be a single drop, then another drop, then another drop. Uh, a multiple is going to be when the blood is flowing a little bit faster or when the source is stationary, dripping in the same spot. Um, so what you see here is you see um, a lot of the satellite spatters. You have your parent drop here, the satellite's outward, and then you have spines radiating outward Okay, in all directions. All right, So that tells us something too. Uh, a pool of blood is another uh, passive um, blood, spa uh, blood spatter. Um, yes, this is actually just a pillow, but um, pretty spiffy. So uh, I didn't think I could actually get you a picture of somebody actually bleeding from the head. Might be a little too much. Uh, projected blood stains. Now these are when there's additional force um, behind uh, the, uh, the movement of the blood. All right, so these are going to be um, low, medium, and high impact spatters cast off arterial spurting, uh, expiratory blood. This means, uh, let's say that someone's, uh, I guess their throat slashed, and then as they exhale, it sprays blood out. Okay, if you get a bloody nose and you sneeze, same idea. So this is an image of an arterial spurt. Okay, an arterial spurt is going to be um, the result of uh, blood pumping rapidly out of a severed artery. Um, what is uh, noticeable about this is that it's, uh, it's linear, and then you also notice that it's trending downwards. Uh, this is a direct result of the um, decreasing uh, quantity of blood. Um, as you lose blood, uh, your heart is going to be able to 
you know, project less blood out of the body. So initially you're going to have really high levels of arterial spurting, uh, and then as the victim loses blood, uh, you'll see a decrease in volume of, uh, of blood. Um, radial is going to be uh, in, uh, identified as a fan-like type of blood spatter, okay? So down here is where the uh, source was, and then uh, something was, you know, maybe a baseball or a baseball bat or a sledgehammer. Something impacted that source of blood and then sprayed it up in a fan-like pattern, okay? So radial is going to be fan-like. Next is a cast-off. So uh, cast off is going to be an example of something like um, if someone is stabbed with a knife and then the knife is quickly retracted, it's going to fling blood um, in a linear pattern. So you can see kind of a linear pattern here, linear pattern here. Uh, you may have seen this if you ever flick a toothbrush, okay, like at the mirror or something like that. Uh, it's going to result in a linear cast off pattern. Difference in high and low velocity, mentioned this already, but high velocity is going to be like this as a result of a gunshot, um, and this is going to be kind of a misted um, type of uh, blood spatter. Uh, low velocity then, here is an example, um, this is obviously going to be, you know, bloody nose or, uh, you know, a, a stomach wound, you know, someone stabbed in the stomach and it's dripping blood, okay, so it's going to be low velocity. And then the last one for us is going to be a contact or transfer. Okay, this is going to be when a bloody object comes in contact with a non-bloody surface. Um, we did mention, remember before, the difference between a swipe and a wipe. Okay, a swipe pattern is going to be uh, a bloody, uh, bloody like hand touching the non-bloody surface. A wipe would be like think of like wiping your nose. Okay, when you wipe your nose, you're not getting something nasty up on your nose. You're you know, if you have a runny nose, you kind of wipe it with a tissue, and you so you are coming to the source of the, uh, you know, of the blood or whatever the case may be. Okay, so uh, swipes and wipes um, do belong in this uh, same category, transfer contact. Um, but remember, again, there are two different things. All right, all right, boom goes dynamite. That's it for today, and uh, more coming your way soon.